I can, okay, yeah. Here, let me... Uh... I guess. <laughs> yeah, now that I've moved position, the cats are uh, attacking. That's fine. Uh, that will come. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can share my... Normally, yes. Sometimes it doesn't work that well. Um... Sorry, one sec. Not sure what the deal is. No, it's so good. So we can, like, this one is small, so we can do it a bit like. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know. Let's see. I'm getting some no worry. error. Uh, I will mute myself because I'm even if I'm phone booth in a co-working space, sometimes it's a bit noisy. Oh, oh. Where, where is the share screen? Oh, here we go. Okay, all right. I think I got it. All right, here we go. Um. Okay. Can I? Can you guys see that? Yep. Yeah. Um. Okay. So this chapter is uh, primarily about lists and attributes. Um. And it's kind of a. I think it was like a little boring chapter i think uh compared to the previous three and probably to the next one so it's a pretty easy easy going chapter um uh oh and i guess the very first uh part of the chapter is also about converting between types so this would be you know i think we all probably do this all the time but uh just the key thing to remember is that you can convert between types of atomic vectors using these you know as logical as numeric and as character functions and then the the big takeaway is that true and false when they're converted to numeric vectors become one and zero uh and then any numeric other than zero uh na or nan becomes true when it gets cast as a logical which i think is a little counterintuitive like two you know becomes true if it's logical and not uh na i kind of my intuition is that it should be na i guess but uh it, it becomes true um so uh, this is just an example of that. Uh, some functions will automatically convert uh, between data types when they expect a certain kind of input. So you see here, sum expects numeric input. Uh, and so we give it a logical vector and it converts true to one, false to zero, and true to one, and the sum is then, then two. So that's all old hat. Um, and so this is just the very first exercise that I, I don't think there's anything to... Um, special about this exercise I, I don't think i think it was just an exercise in kind of getting used to the idea of working with a, a logical uh yeah no no it's good like you made yeah like i think yeah it's, this one was easy because like uh but it's just showing like oh sometimes typecasting can help you mm -hmm. and this yeah. is a good case of uh and one trick is usually like you can do like for example yeah, maybe here it seems trivial because you bring it like, you know, in the workflow of the chapter, but on some kind, you can like generate a column that's basically like a predicate true false. Then you can use that for like generating a bunch of sum and stuff like that. So that, I think mm -hmm. this is mostly it, but yeah, good job yeah. doing it anyway. Yeah, but yeah, I think, yeah, that's a good point. Um, and in this case, he points out that you can use one minus a logical to get the inverse of the logical. That's kind of a helpful little tidbit. Um Always forget and that. And I actually, yeah. I jumped, it, yeah, I, I, I had forgotten that too. Uh, and I jumped to exercise 4.6 for a second because some of them are about uh, converting between logical and, and uh, numeric vectors. But yeah, I, mean, I think they're all also uh, fairly straightforward. Um, you know, we, we can see the true or false times uh, the vector of one through 10 is equal to zero through one times the vector of one through 10 because they both get uh, cast as a, to a numeric type. Um, some as logical X um, can be, I guess, can be handy, can compute the number of non-zero elements in the vector. So, uh, or, or non-zero, non-NA uh, and non-NAN, I guess. Um, I think more typically it would, it would be what Olivier just said, which is if you have a, a vector or a column of logicals, you do the sum and then you get the uh proportion if you divide by length then you get the proportion of uh of trues i guess uh 
Oh, right. And so this, uh, there's this uh, third question in exercise 4.6 about uh, the question is basically like, well, if characters are the most uh, kind of general uh, type of data class, does that mean we can just convert uh, between character and anything else and get the same answer? And the answer no. Uh, for instance, if you do as numeric as character, if you, you know, uh, nest as character within as numeric on the object false, you get, uh, I guess, I think zero, but as character false. Let's see. Or no, I think you get uh, one, actually. Well, I'd, I'd have to test it. But uh, that would be give you a very I'm different... I'm not sure, but I think you get one because like, uh, yeah. uh, it has the length of one. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you do as numeric false, then you get you get zero. So yeah, so uh, I think the first one gives you one and the, and the I think, bottom one gives you zero. Okay. Uh, and so this is just kind of more little exercises with the use of the the uh, logical vectors and kind of emphasizing that they get converted into zeros and ones. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear if you think of any useful. I uh, I I thought that this section, this exercise, was trying to teach me something useful, but I didn't really know what what I was supposed to get from this. Um, so when you add uh, and I, I have some examples on the next side, but basically when you add uh, logical vectors, true plus false equals true, that struck me as kind of unintuitive, but is, yeah. uh, you know, if you convert to numeric and then add one and, Makes and sense. zero, you can get one. Um, true times false is false, also kind of unintuitive, uh, I think, I don't know, but uh, makes sense with the one and zeros. My take is uh, like, like I said, one minus six. Lot. Yeah. I'll um, be very careful when I'm using them. Yeah. And the idea is like you could also like I guess the goal of the exercise was like also you could replace some of the logic uh with predicate with that. Hmm. Oh, I see. Like Sometimes instead of maybe using like yeah. you can uh instead of doing a predicate, like let's say um like let's say something that true true false and false false true something like you can use also like this logic mm, but I, yeah, I agree yeah, yeah yeah that makes sense um i will probably do a mistake on this one yeah i think yeah this to me maybe i just don't have good intuitions about it and it's not but i i think i'd be likely to mess it up but so yeah. here are the examples i guess you can see um yeah. you know if like that first kind of column, you have a true plus a false is a true. Um, over here you have x times y, you have a true times a false is false. Uh, yeah, this is just the inverse. You see, like, uh, yeah, you know, the inverse of the first, yeah, true is false, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then this is this this actually makes sense. This is intuitive. Yeah. Where you, uh, you know, for instance, like the first element x and y aren't equal, so you get a true. So that you know that that's pretty intuitive. Um. He also had this kind of exercise about the cumulative functions. And I, again, I didn't really understand how this could be useful. I, I see that you could test it to see if any uh, element in X is true or false. So like if Q min, uh, if any element returns something other than zero, then you have, uh, you know, a, a, a true somewhere in there. Um, uh, and the converse for Q you know, Q min of not X. Uh, and I, yeah, I think kind of the same for Q max. Like if you have Q max and you have anything other than, uh, or if you have anything above uh, zero, then yeah, uh, then you then you have a true. I, and I uh, guess, yeah, in that case, I will use any probably. Right, yeah, any, yeah. And I, I was wondering, that's what I, I put on the next slide. Like, why would you ever use this instead of like is true or true in X or any, like you said, I wasn't sure. If he was trying to teach us something, I, I just, think the uh, goal is mostly like uh, playing with them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know the big, so like, big yeah. 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 Sure. Um. Yeah. So that you know, just a strange exercise, I guess. Um. Okay. Onto lists. Oops. Yeah. More so list list everyone loves list. I think they're probably you know. My favorite data type. Uh, and so lists have some, 
lists lists have my uh, have some great features. Uh, they uh, can contain multiple data classes. So you, you, this example, you can see there's a, like a numeric vector, uh, a logical vector, and a character vector. Um, and the vectors don't have to be of the same length. So you can have pretty much arbitrary things for every every element in a list. And uh, as you can see, you can create them with the function list. Uh, and you can also concatenate list uh, using the concatenate function, which I actually had forgotten and I think would be is is useful to know. Uh, and you can see it just it just uh, assembles them into a bigger list. Uh, you can also transform vectors into lists by uh, using the as dot list function. Although this I don't have any examples, but converting to and from list can get pretty messy pretty fast. I think like once you start doing any anything complicated, it it, it does get pretty tricky. Um, so that's I don't know. I guess something to watch out for. Um, and so the kind of the converse of as list is this unlist function, which you can use to basically like take every element of a list and put it all in the same vector. Uh, and the kind of the cost of that, as you can see in that second example, is that everything gets coerced into like the most general type. So like in the last example, you see because we have spam, which is a character, type everything else in the in the list gets convert uh converted to a character so it can all be in the same vector uh and so yeah that that can sometimes i i've tried to do split apply combine uh workflows where you uh use a list to store groups of uh of objects and then you apply a function to them and then you uh, try to unlist back and then it kind of gets all crazy so I, I i definitely need to work on my listing and unlisting a little bit i hope i that's something i'm hoping i figure out in the next uh the next chapter um and he has this it's kind also of flatten it's also flatten like uh it's recursive so more you'll it's it's flatten yeah. everything like just one so it's a bit dangerous sometimes and i don't know actually was the recursive thing in this chapter or the next chapter because uh I think it's in the next chapter, but yeah, there is this uh, thing. I'll show. I'll I'll show it to you. I guess. We, I guess if we have time, but yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I guess we'll we'll circle back to that. Uh, and he has this comment that null can be used as a placeholder in lists, but not in vectors. Uh, so you can see, if you make a list with null, the elements, uh, you know, are there, but list null. And if you do it in the same in a vector, it just disappears. Yeah, it's it's kind of unintuitive, but yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that. Because yeah, lot yeah, of that time. yeah, yeah. But uh, so I don't know. I thought maybe we could discuss. You know what we use list for. I I uh, you know obviously data frames are lists uh, with special properties. Um, you know non tape tabular data with different types. I think later on we there's a um, the very last exercise you uh, kind of do a. Uh, load a JSON file as a list, which is interesting. That's kind of like a classic non-tabular data source. Um, I split apply combine workflows use list, and yeah, I, I don't know. I thought I thought I could do I could have a discussion yeah. about about how to use lists. Um, but yeah, I think those are the kind of the big use cases. Yeah, some of my coworkers use it also like for storing. Uh, you know, like you can sync sometimes YAML file. That's kind of the same idea as mm -hmm. JSON. Yeah. And uh, also, like, uh, so basically, like, the structure of your YAML uh, will produce some object that you will, I don't know, maybe pipeline in something. So th this also exists. Yep. Yeah. So they're they're very useful. Um, uh, you have, like, one case, like, maybe you don't know, but uh, the geometric colon in spatial formats list. What is it? What's the, uh, if you use special data um, huh. and the ACF package, it's at the geometric column, specific okay. type. And this is basically a list. Hmm. That makes sense. Okay, interesting. Huh. So, yeah. But which I was know, like, I... you, you link it like the, with like the, I think it was like the paper of Conf of Wicam saying like table can have like, uh, what does it do a lot with like uh, pure and stuff like that? Like it's, they mm, were like yeah. before, mm, like your paper yeah. you mentioned, I, mean, I think you couldn't have into a tidy format, a list into a colon and no, you mm -hmm. can 
which created the ID like storing geometry in the list in a column. I see. Yeah, that makes so sense. It's the same ID, but yeah, extended. Okay. okay, that's interesting. I haven't worked with spatial data really at all, so I I don't know that package, but uh, well, I, it's I, it's I the SF store geometry as a list inside okay. of one colon. So yeah, th exactly what you said. Okay. Um. So on to attributes, and yeah, so I you know um have used R for a while, and really almost never have used attributes. I think they'd be mostly useful um if you're designing a package uh that had its uh, its own special class of objects that you wanted to kind of uh, be able to interact with different sub attributes but um there are some kind of more general uses for them too uh so attributes are just kind of these uh, almost like notes that you can append to an object uh you can create them using structure and they generally don't change the operation of functions on the object so here you can see that we have a vector of one through 10 and you can give it just kind of arbitrary attributes using this structure function. Um, but some R functions do use attributes to store indices, names, and other useful information. So he gives a couple examples. One is this na omit function actually stores the indices of uh, the missing values in an attribute. So you can see like if you print uh, the the uh, y na free like the the version of y with no nas you still have an attribute uh na action that stores uh, the the indices in the, of the the nas that got removed from the original object so it's you know i don't know if that's that useful but uh and again here he gave another example of uh the uh g reg g g g reg x per the kind of like the find function uh, and it stores, I think, the index of the uh, character vector that it finds in the uh, in the haystack kind of vector, and also the number of characters uh, in to each each. Uh, so, you know, I don't know that that's that useful, but I'm sure I'm sure some people can find a use for it. Uh, and the, and the big one is names. Um, you know, so you can see you can create names a couple different ways, but one is just to uh, use uh, a character vector and an equal sign or a character uh, uh, and an equal sign to assign uh, elements to names. So here we did A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. And you can see if you print the attributes, you get names A, B, C. Um, so I, I'm jumping, I guess, down to 4.2, which I was kind of a frustrating exercise for me, actually. Um, and so the point of this exercise 4.2 is he had uh, three uh, CSV files on his GitHub, uh, which have this exchange rate for from euros to other kinds of uh, currency. currency. And uh, I was trying to, you know, load them and assign them attributes it's in a way that just wasn't like hey like i didn't want to with every single one and do you know that and uh so i was i really struggled with it actually so i i um I to load them is not a, so hard i guess you can make a, a list define yeah that's probably right yeah, yeah instead um, of like but the, the thing i i really struggled is, with i mean this is a, a, a an anonymous function no yeah 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 so yeah um but, and and down here, uh, kind of when I'm assigning attributes, I struggled because I wanted to use Laply to uh, operate on all three elements of the list at once. And that's kind of easy because uh, for the three attributes, you... currency from, date from, and date to, they all have the same uh, uh, yeah. value. But they have different values for currency too, and so this actually doesn't work. This, if you use, uh, if you just concatenate uh, the Australian dollar, the pound, and the American dollar, you just get it. Just gets assigned. Uh, each of them gets assigned that attribute. I think Every it would just element of the list gets assigned. Oh, do a loop. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. And I was thinking I could use per uh, map. Yeah, um, you probably to, like yeah. yeah. You can probably do that, but then you loop on the file and on the um, yeah on the currency too. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think a loop 
but um yeah I, I did i was i struggled to figure out like an elegant way to do this that wasn't um and i really would have liked to have to not have to type out the names of the uh the files and just have because uh just to use the regular expression but it doesn't work i guess when you're downloading stuff from github you have to um oh for so, the stuff for github you can i guess for what you, you mean like uh like your apply lo your log nine to eleven is elegant, no? Yo, yeah, you could have list no, you can't list file. Ah, that's fine, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. No worries. Yeah. That's good enough. <laughs> uh so that's that. Uh the point of exercise uh, 4.3 was just to teach us about this comment attribute, which you can only assign a character vector to. If you don't, you see that it gives a, an error over here. We get so not an error, my so that's, that's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I don't know why you would, why, it's not clear to me why, I don't know, why you would ever want that. And you see it has no effect on the operation of the, the object. It's storing information, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is kind of the same point with the names attribute, exercise 4.4. It doesn't change the type of the object. Um, and you can still use functions on it just like an ordinary vector. Um, names have this special kind of some special helper functions. You can use the names function to return the names attribute. Um, you can also use unname to remove the name attribute from a vector. And uh, so that's, yeah, that's equivalent to structure names equals null. Okay, null delete everything except in list. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, we have uh, we have some cat shenanigans. Uh, exercise 4.5 was also, I think, like relatively straightforward. I think was, the idea was just to show us that some functions store information in attributes and especially the names attributes so here's this quantile function stores the uh these kind of uh legends that it uses to help you see the the quantiles in the names attribute um same like the histogram function same same deal we can see here that it uh it kind of stores all this information um so there's actually two attributes here there's there's names and there's uh an attribute class histogram, which though I think the plot plotting kind of libraries probably use to yeah. make decisions. So yeah, that's um um and you know I guess an important aside, I think and moving on now to four point six names only get preserved for vectorized functions. So you can see for quantile, it doesn't matter the names uh or excuse yeah. me for uh for two times x which is is vectorized uh, the names that quantile assigned to x get saved uh but if you do mean which is is not a vectorized it just returns one value then the names get uh removed uh same for same same Wrong. principle at work here um and you know, actually, I wasn't sure about this one, but there was this this question about what is the meaning of x uh, equal sign equal sign null, um, and I I I didn't know. I I know that there's this function is null x, you know, which will return true or false. Um, yeah, you shouldn't use equal equal null because yeah. like it make it, uh, the, the meaningless is like what can be equal to what we don't know. Right. Yeah. I yeah. I I didn't. Yeah. And so I actually was experimenting with it, and it, I I think it oftentimes just returned a, like a numeric length zero. Um, so it was yeah, it seemed like a meaningless, uh, meaningless thing to me. So I think is null. If you ever need a test for null, use is null. Um, and just for I think repeating a little bit, but to name vectors, you can use structure and the names argument, or you can use these arguments in a. In, uh, I think uh, like the operator of function, you know, like the equal equal is a function, uh, mm -hmm. and is null is probably implemented differently. So both then, yeah. both function and maybe they do not have exactly the same. Uh, and is null is optimized for the careless where it's null, where the equal equal mm -hmm. is probably optimized for a bunch of other stuff. It's yeah. more general. So that's why maybe when you know what you want, it's better to ask a function that's 
do that. I think this is one divide. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good a good point. Um, okay. Uh, and yeah, it is, again, these are kind of he's trying to show us in exercise four point seven, kind of like some like edge cases, I guess, um, with uh, kind of converting to and from lists. Uh, so I don't know. It's very complicated just to just to look at, but you can see like the the as character uh, I think operated uh, on this. The the kind of funny thing is it operated on this uh, on this list uh, parentheses one and two and on on that second element list. So it, those never even became lists. They just uh, got turned into characters. Um, but uh, in the just, second just example, like, you can just like, list uh, the list. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Like the yeah. the two examples together make it clear how dangerous yeah. it can be doing as characters on the yeah. list because it will convert like the object lists in a weird stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, and just kind of there's a lot of uh, a lot of issues. Unlist can also cause problems too. I guess I'll I have an example of that in the next one. I think um, or the one in uh, it's a language uh, yeah. gotcha. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, so, uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, as numeric, yeah. the same problem. Yeah, same problem. Same problem. Uh, where it can't convert. Um, and then here, what's uh, if you unlist, <laughs> it's a function it's treating uh this <laughs> so SD on the definition as a function. Them. Yeah, it's treating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so. Be uh that's true yeah i'm not sure what you would do with that but well, you have um, this one because like you have one like that's very weird like i will type it into the chat i don't yeah. I, I hope i remember correctly you can see it like uh it's an empirical uh cdf which is a uh, cumulative distribution and the uh, ecdf function return a function mm. so mm -hmm. sometimes you want to store the function in some way but that's yeah, I agree. Weird. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then so you take the output from the function and then plug it into the yeah. That, uh, that's what I did. But yeah, like sometimes that's, that's, you that's, just want ECDF. Yeah. 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 That's tricky. Um. Let's see. Uh. So here. What's going on? Uh. Let's see what to do. Oh, I think I've cut yes. off. I cut off the very bottom. But oh uh, yeah, I don't think it's correct. Oh, it's a combine with a list, and he added the three to the four five. Okay, one two that makes sense. Three makes sense, and just yeah. Five disappear. Yeah, That's I've got up. I should, I got a, I have a. No, no, you're I, correct, probably. Oh, oh, so it cuts, it cuts it off. I see. I mean, yeah. he got it, but attributed to four weirdly, but we are still into like. The combine, break it here. Oh no, because the list is here. okay. Well, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this is just another. I think kind of exercise about working with lists uh where you're trying to combine two vectors with a list of n vectors to form a list of two plus n vectors um, and so i think the way to do this is uh with concatenate uh so first you you can concatenate lists yeah. um, and you can concatenate vectors but you can't you can can't really concatenate lists and vectors you have to so the idea is that you uh First, convert you know. First, make a list of x and y, and then concatenate that list with the the other list. Yeah. And that's I think useful because it preserves the names of the elements of the list to yeah. it. You get x, y, z, w. Um, you can also use this append function. So then and then there's yeah, you can there's like kind of bad ways to do it. So if you do list, um, and don't uh, yeah, you create uh, a sub list. Create a list from x and y first, then you get uh. A, a list with a sub like the z and w become uh yeah this is this is definitely like a gotcha like yeah. you can definitely yeah. make i will definitely make the error 
yeah it's an it's an easy error to make um and same deal over here is if you use unlist then you get this kind of awful thing where uh they are, it, it flattens everything yeah yeah flattens everything so and lose the name and you lose the name yeah so that's that's not good um exercise 4.9 oh good Sorry, I think I'm lagging, but I feel like this whole chapter is very much a like list of getches, like things that are going to cause you problems. And then you're going to have a vague memory of reading this and be like, oh, I know what's happening. Yeah, I agree. But uh, it's good because like, um, yeah, I think it's drilled on for the next chapter. I think I also like essentially, obviously it worked a little different, but I think I essentially was mired in a problem of this nature in python last spring where i was going from like a multi-index data frame and she was trying to flatten it and i did not understand the underpinning rules of this in python and it got really messy really fast and so i oh we lose you but yeah we lose you but yeah, I think, yeah, like flatten a data frame, like we probably produce a list first. And then if you flatten the list, uh, I don't know what you will get, but yeah, the word casting, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is just to teach us about uh, RDS okay. files so you can save uh, objects to RDS files if you want to use them later in a different session. Mm. And it, it you know, preserves the the attributes. Yeah. Or may, does it? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Preserve both attributes. Preserve, preserve both attributes. Yeah. You, you just I guess I should have given it. I should have given whatever. Uh, name. I should have given it ten names. I guess for every element, but I didn't. That's fine. Uh, and then yeah, this this very last exercise is just to use that you can uh, load JSON files as lists, which is I like. I think pretty useful. I think there's a yeah. Questions, so, yeah, yeah, this is super useful for config file. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you don't yeah, want yeah. to, you also don't want to write the geosys, I mean, the config file by hand. A lot of time right. you want yeah. something to write the config file for you. So, this is yeah. usually like a good idea. Yeah, because uh, JSON is very hard to write because it has uh, yeah. kind of weird tabs and stuff that aren't really. Uh, and you probably import them from the web anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of all I have. Um, yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, I think that was a slow chapter, but I think the next, I think the next chapter will be interesting. Um, uh, well, it's a slow, but I think it was important to play. I think this is sometimes, uh, you know, like all, even if the example that you bring look like stupid, it's good to remember stupid ex example when you have like real data that are very big. And you are adopting if it's the data or your logic. Then mm -hmm. you can build a, a stupid example very fast and yeah. test what you have built against the stupid example. Uh, and then see like, does my data have something inside of it that's Absolutely. making or does the... So it's good to practice that skills. Also, like <laughs> weirdly, this is a lot of bunch of gotcha technical question. So mm -hmm. in some interview where people can ask them, Never, I mean, yeah. less, I, I feel more in Python. I think like people try to like in the interview side of stuff, I have seen more people using this kind of gotcha question where like, mm -hmm. uh, I think one good example for that, like if I had like this trick, like let's say like, someone asking me like to, I don't know, play with list in R, ask me some question with like a very, I think the good answer in this interview will be like, will I, can, can I like, you know, run the example in the console and discuss the result with you? But yeah, yeah, this is good. Um, yeah. And maybe, maybe next time I'll, I'll focus on the split stuff. Cause I, I also want to uh, learn that well, I think. And you know, like you, even like sometimes, for example, uh, when you are like, um, I think, I don't know if it's, yeah, no, it's an acceptor, but, um, because next chapter we are seeing subsetting finally yeah and uh, this this list um yeah no nothing like yeah weird gotcha that you should practice 
uh, because like there is some pitfall I feel. And yeah, this is this was smart people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for doing it. it. Was a good presentation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you don't have to do all of them. So. Yeah, I will um, have some. No worry. <laughs> Maybe other people yeah. will join. Hopefully. Sometimes. Yeah, I think I think I think you're right. I think once we get later, I think we'll get more people. Hopefully. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's okay if we don't. I, I don't know. I yeah, that's to... good. Good enough. You know, it's it's a good book, and it's it's uh, it's good to play with this small exercise sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the later chapters too, because some some um, you know, I, I I don't understand data frames as well as I should. I, I don't think I understand um like environments or expressions as well as I should. I so I think this is yeah. Data I don't, programming yeah, so is very I, complicated. I, I I'm one hundred yeah. percent not fully understanding it. Yeah. Uh, so, one one good stuff like I have seen in the next chapter was like subs, like you know something like I use a lot in deep is the minus select when mm -hmm. you want to remove a column, and mm -hmm. I have seen like a way of doing it in the next chapters, uh, just with base R, which I like it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just for tease. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. You can. I think you can use it in both base R and deep plier. The the minus no because like yeah the subsetters like it's basically. You are generating an indexer on your number of column by yeah. using like the match see, or yeah. the percentage in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which produces not exactly the same result because if you minus select with a column that does not exist in the mm. player, I think you're going to get a warning or at least an error. Yeah. And if you are doing that in base R, you probably work, which is, I don't think, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. No, that was yeah, good. That's a good point. So, yeah. well, next week is in three week. So, okay. good luck. We can like <laughs> maybe do exercise and, and prepare for next time. Yeah. Well, Bye. thanks. Thanks for doing it. Bye. It was a good presentation. Good job. <laughs>